Karen, welcome. If you want to bring up your slides, we'll we'll check your slides and your sound right quick. Okay, doke. One sec here. How is that? Looks great. All right. Um, hello, folks. I'm going to be talking about compiling Zeek scripts. So let me start with what do you care? And, and in fact, most of this talk is really going to be about using this functionality as opposed to how it's implemented. Um, so it's more a user um, focus as opposed to developer. I've talked in the past about the development side of things at last year's Zeek week and also at a uh, webinar. So <clears throat> since way back in the day, um, mid 90s, Zeek is, executes its scripts using an interpreter. So the interpreter takes the uh, sort of syntactic form and turns it into a tree. And then when a given script is running, it is walking that tree to evaluate each of the elements. And what this boils down to is that performance was every element, syntactic element in a script more or less is at least one C++ function call. So if you, for example, execute print A plus B, even before getting to the work of actually doing the print, there's at least four function calls, one to figure out what A's value is, one to figure out what B's value is, one to add them, and then one to feed that to the print statement. So this is not super fast. <clears throat> it is really easy to implement and to extend, and that's why it was the design choice um, and arguably uh, it has worked very well for quite a while, um, but boy, is it slow. And so I'm going to do a um, first of a few demos here. Let me pull up my demo environment. Um, one sec. So um, some of you may have, may have seen this from a, a webinar I did earlier. This is a script that uh, Seth wrote because um, he likes writing things that don't seem like you could write in Zeek. In Zeek. And it uh, prints out the Mandelbrot set. And it's, it's a pretty involved script. There's a lot going on here. You can see a lot of those elements, so a lot of function calls. And here we've got a loop that has another loop inside it. So you know it's got some n squared e sort of stuff going on. And then there's a loop wrapped around all of that. So there's a bunch of computation. Now, if we run this, I'm gonna use the dash B flag, which is bare mode of Zeek. It doesn't matter for the default where I'm just running on that uh, with the interpreter, but it's gonna matter for other things in the future. And I'll, I'll cover that in a minute. So, so we, if we run on this, um, we see it makes this pretty picture and it's doing the, the Mandelbrot fractal set. And it, it, it's not super fast, because um, it's doing all those function calls and the like. And it's, um, but it'll, it'll keep going and it'll run like this for um, many minutes really till it finally finishes. Um, and I'm, so I'm gonna stop that. Go back to my slides briefly, uh, which of course are not, oh uh, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> all right, slow. And, we're in the business of high performance network monitoring and this slow is just not great for that. What to do about it? Well, so there's two experimental improvements now available in Zeek that uh, try to do better. The first one takes those trees that I described and further compiles them into a low level forum called Zam. I'm not gonna go into the details of that, uh, but I will give that a demo. Here we are. So now I'm gonna run the same thing and I'm just gonna say, oh, please zam it for me. And it's a lot faster. Now, let me get back. So, cool. And then there's another form, um, which is newer. And uh, I, I talked last week, 2020 on Zam. This one, this one's new since then. 
which takes the scripts and compiles them into C++. So um, generates essentially new programs um, in C++ to execute them. And I'm gonna demo that one now. So a reminder, um, this is the original speed. This is the ZAM speed. And now instead I'm gonna say, hey, use that C++ I compiled. And it's even faster. In fact, this one will run what that what takes several minutes in the original and it's now completed. All right, so that's why you should care about what I'm gonna talk about. Um, Cause hey, it's really fast. Um, on the other hand, life is not quite that simple. And in particular, uh, Zeek spends its time doing at least depending on what granularity you want to talk about it, uh, four or, uh, basic types of things. One is it's just got to get the packets and, and filter them in some fashion. It's a low level activity and speed there depends on the NIC and on the operating system. Uh, that goes into the event engine, which is written in C++ and it might be running plugins and it's doing the piecing together of stuff um, into, in, into various events. It's doing a bunch of parsing similar to what the spicy talk that Benjamin just gave. <clears throat> then things get executed as scripts so that all the event handlers are written as, as Zeek scripts. And this is either done with the interpreter today or these experimental features, XAM or C++ code. And there might be a bunch of packages that have scripts. And then finally, the scripts are gonna call built-in functions. Those can uh, themselves take a bunch of processing. And uh, for example, logging is going to boil down to uh, pretty expensive built-in functions. All right, so the part that I'm talking about is this third element, and it is a lot faster with these extensions uh, or these experimental um, ways of executing. So as, as you can see there, like three to 30 times for XAM, it, it depends on how much um, the script uh, does, how complicated it is. Simple ones don't speed up very much. And maybe five to 100 times faster in C++. But all that other stuff is still there. And none of that is changed um, with these uh, uh, enhancements. And so uh, how much faster everything will go depends on, you know, Amdahl's law. So it's essentially your bottleneck on the slowest of these. So you, using Xamers compiled to C++, you might not get a huge improvement at all. Um, or you might, really depends. However, here's the key. Scripts become cheaper conceptually to employ. And so we can afford to put a lot more processing in scripts because they're no longer as inefficient as historically they have been. Okay, how do you use it? Well, for XAM, um, you need Zeek Master um, and it'll be in uh, 4.2 or of course 5.0 when it's available. Um, and you just add on the command line dash O's and give me XAM. If you're not running with dash B, that bear mode flag I gave, um, it'll take a few seconds to start up. And that's because it uh, does a bunch of work to compile down to the, the low level form. But by a few seconds, I mean a few, like five or something, depending on, of course, your processor. That's it. That's all you have to do. And you get the performance improvement. <clears throat> and there is documentation about um, using it and so forth. Both of these features live in this new subdirectory off of the source directory called scriptop for script optimization. Under it, there's XAM and C++, and there's also a bunch of common code in that directory if you want to poke through under the hood. Now, for C++, the workflow is not as convenient, and that, in fact, was the whole motivation for doing XAM, is that that XAM workflow is just so appealing. C++, hmm. All right, so you need Zeek 4.1 or later. And then if you wanna compile some script foo.zeek and all the internal scripts, it depends on, it loads essentially. 
shouldn't even say depends on any if, if, if it doesn't depend on it but loads it you're still going to compile it um, what do you do well you first you go into the build directory for the zeke so you need to be working here from source code you tell zeke hey i want to generate c plus plus for my script and it's going to spit out a c plus uh, plus file um, that the build environment knows about. So now you rebuild using Maker Ninja. And maybe you install this version if you really want installed to have installed the compiled scripts, or maybe you just keep it local. Um, this step is slow. It is really slow. So um, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Here, I'm going to not install it, so I'm going to execute it out of Zeek build source. So I directly invoke it, and I say, I want to use C++. And in this case, I'm still handing it the original script. There's a variance where you don't have to hand it the original script. I'm not going to go into that detail now. Um, and, and in fact, it's, I believe, going to uh, change a bit. And then this also has a readme. So that's how you how you use it. Now, what are what are the issues? Well, the runtime error messages are um, less precise. They don't point because and it's because they don't have the script nicely compiled right at hand like the interpreter does. Uh, this is fixable over time. It just takes a number. Zam assumes you don't have uninitialized variables. And if you do, it can lead to crashes. Now, that, that, that is really unfun. And there's a new flag dash u that will tell you um, and should identify quite accurately this variable could be un uninitialized at this point. There is a corner case if you're using when expressions um, that depend on the value of aggregates, they may not get triggered. It's just a bug that should be fixed, but hasn't. And um, this is not really an issue per se, but if, if your script uses a when clause or a lambda, um, it won't be compiled. It should still all work. ZM code should inter interact with uh, interpreted code, no problem. Same with C++, all three of them should play uh, fine with each other. For the C++ compilation, um, like I said, it's slow and it's, it's slow if you are um, not optimizing the Zeek build or hugely slow. So how slow do I mean? Well, the dash B Mandelbrot one, that was optimized, so not the enabled. That took about 45 seconds to compile on my uh, laptop. But if I had left off the dash B, it would take six to eight hours. Um, now that's just unworkable. And I'm currently, uh, the next thing I'm, I'm focusing on is a different way of generating the code that should be much faster. Um, but it's a lot of work. It's going to be a big change. Um, it's underway. So now, if you enable debug, then um, the dash B case compiles in a few seconds and the not dash B case in like a minute or so. So it's tolerable. And the code will still be pretty fast. Uh, it has the same issue with runtime error messages not being um, very precise. This is a subtle, nasty one. Um, so if you've got conditional code, the compiler does not know about it. And it sees whatever, however the conditions evaluated when you told it, hey, compile foo.zeek and hardwires in that version of the program. So you, um, if you run with different conditions, you'll, they'll just be essentially ignored. And, and that's a nasty one. Um, I have some thoughts on how to avoid it, um, but currently this can really bite you. And it, in, in particular, it means, unfortunately, all the, cluster code is does have conditional elements. And so uh, that stuff will not work currently. This really is limiting. I get that. Um, it's also subtle to fix. So it has the same issue with uninitialized variables. 
Uh, and it does not compile scripts that have wins or type switches. You may or may not know about those where you can switch on the type of an any, a, a something whose nominal type is any. Um, it does do lambdas. Those will get fixed over time. Finally, uh, we use our test suite a lot for uh, uh, QA and uh, CI CD and doing that with this workflow because you have to rebuild every time you have a script you care about um, is really a pain. All right, so let me summarize uh, what we have. Um, we've got Xam, it's got this easy workflow, really quite appealing, just on the command line, just say, hey, I'd like to go faster. It's currently only in, in, in uh, Git master. It'll add potentially a few seconds to your startup time. So if you if you play with it to see, hey, how how much does it speed up my toy script? Well, it it won't because it's going to be compiling it. Um, it it but it should give uh, significant script speed up to uh, production things that run for a while. The C plus plus compilation um, has the the workflow that's really a pain and and takes a long time, uh, but it's quite a bit faster than Xam still. And it is available now in 4.1. And then just this reminder, hey, it all depends on you know what, what you actually get in production depends on the balance between how much you're doing in scripting versus the other elements of Zeke's execution. But again, I'll emphasize this point because this is really the motivation underlying the work. Um, it now becomes a lot more feasible to put a bunch of work in scripting because the scripts are a lot more efficient. And with that, I am done a little bit early, field some questions or we can just get caught up. Look at Slack. Vern, thank you so much for that. Um, I don't know, there, you might have some questions in the Slack channel. Uh, I don't see any. Alrighty, well, if that's the case, we'll go ahead and we'll admit Seth Huh. Yeah, let, let me let me one final thing. I really need people working on trying this. I, I have almost nobody. I've been trying to convince people to try it. Don't quite get it. Why not? Uh, particularly for Sam, where the workflow is easy. So um, please, uh, you know, it's not going to evolve very well if I don't have uh, alpha testers. And there you go, folks. You can reach out and you can have uh, you can help Vern in his new endeavors. So for those of you who've always wanted to work with Vern Paxson on something, here's your opportunity. So ping him in the channel um, in this in this talk channel. You can ping him on the Zeke Slack. You can send a note to info at we'll get it to him. There's tons of ways to reach out to Vern uh, to give him a hand. So, again, thank you so much, Vern, for that. Thank you. All right, Seth, if you want to bring up your slides and um, we'll check your sound right quick.